Hello and welcome back to another three-point edit Blender VC tutorial and today I thought we'd talk about um, HDR recording or video recording. Uh, there's a wonderful new feature um, developed for Canon digital SLRs. Uh, I happen to have an EOS 550D. It's a superseded model but it's wonderful and it seems to be improving all the time with the firmware update by Magic Lantern. Uh, developers there uh, have done wonderful things with a new frame rate control. You can get down to fr four, frames per sh four frames per second now with the shutter speed, which giving you a lovely smooth sort of movements uh, of movement in the frame. Uh, we also get this wonderful new feature called HDR video so that you can record high contrast and um, high contrast images in your um, in your videos. So you might have uh, very bright windows and very dark interiors and you want them to be balanced out evenly but you don't have the lighting for it. Uh, you can add two frames in post-production of a dark and a light and um, and retain the, the highlights and the contrast that you need. Um, you can find out more on the Vimeo user group, Magic Lantern user group, uh, with detailed download instructions and installation instructions. Has a quick ex a quick demonstration. I'll show you what I recorded the other day. Uh, you can see that this w this shot is very challenging. It's got a very bright exterior which has been underexposed to retain that information and at the same time uh, the camera is able to record with this HDR feature from Magic Lantern uh, a very bright interior. So it changed the ISO or the speed of the chip to record a nice bright interior with a f uh, correct illumination on faces. Now when you add these two clips together you get a much better balance, this flat look. Uh, if we zoom in here, you can see that now the face faces are um, much better exposed and so is the exterior out the window. When I give it a bit of a grade, crush down the dark areas and bring up the lights, we can see that we can see the both of these without them being um, without them being dark or bright. Uh, here's, the, here's the exposure for, as an example. So on the side here you can still see out the window, but in the middle where it's just a high exposure it's all white and uh, on the right it's uh, very dark. So anyway, how did I do this? Well, I shot it at 50 frames per second at 720p, which does give you a lower resolution, but you need those extra frames per second so that you don't have motion blur in between the um, movement, So, which often causes ghosting. If I play this clip back, you can see around the hands here that there's no little ghosting um, because what the way it works is that the camera now records a first frame of dark exposure and then another frame of light exposure. Oops, and I need to go to the oops the right place. Mm, oops, that one. Sorry. Okay, I'll get rid of the audio. Don't want that. Snap, snap that with S Shift S to snap the clip. You'll notice that uh, over here on the waveform monitor, um, it is uh, very dark or crushed down here. But we have lots of room up here for our highlight information. Now, if we scrub along one frame to the next frame, scrub along to the next frame, which I hold down the Alt key and use my mouse to scroll along, or I could come down here and click to the next frame. You'll notice it's very, very bright. Now all the dark area has now moved up, so there's more space for the information. But in the lights, it, they now go flat on top. That's called clipping, and we're losing lots of information there. We don't want that. So what we need to do is combine these two clips together. And the way that I've done that is to um, change the speed of, of the clip. So I need to speed up the clip by two times. I'll add an effect, so I'll go Shift A and we'll go to Effect Strip and we'll go to Speed Control and that automatically puts a clip on, a speed strip on top. Okay, so we need to have this, this um, clip or strip running at half its duration. So it's pretty straightforward. Click in the frame count and we'll go Divide by 2 and it yields the exact half half length. This, of course, has not changed. Click on it to get it to snap to the right length. Now, because the speed strip, if I scroll down here, is stretched to import strip length, it will now run at two times speed because I've divided the length of the clip by two. 
just duplicate the bottom strip, shift D and move it up. Should be starting in the same place, so shift S and snap it to the same place. Uh, what I need to do is get it to start one frame further across. So it's starting on the light frame. Now when I add the uh, speed speed control uh, this time I'll have to put in speed control of 2 turn off street speed stretch speed factor of 2 ok now it's working correctly so there's two ways of adding changing the speed in blender now we have two clips, I'll meta those together, so the light frame and its um, and its requisite speed strip I will change to meta, 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 meta I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, here it is please meta, I'll do the same with the bottom one select both of those, strip, make meta, yes please now they're both there, now what I'll do is I'll I will select the bottom one and the top one of course at the moment I can only see the top one because it's occluding the bottom one I will shift A add another effect this time I will add a gamma cross and it runs the duration of the strip now we need to just change that from default fade to gamma cross change that to 0.5 Oh, look at that, it's not working. <laughs> Why is that not working? So I'll poke that in the eye. And for some reason, my bottom strip is now also the light strip. So I might pause this and have a quick look at that. Okay, I corrected that. I'll just change the speed strip back to uh, not a stretch stretch speed clip but a preset value. Anyway, now I've got a dark frame on the bottom and a light frame on the top. I'll get rid of the gamma cross. Try that again. I'll activate this by turning on the eye. So now we have the clip on top is bright, sorry, and the clip underneath is dark. Bright and dark. So now I'll add the gamma strip. So I select the bottom one and the top one, press a, Shift A and I'll look for gamma cross, there it is at the moment we're seeing pretty much all of the dark clip, if I change that to 0.5 come down here and turn off default fade make that 0.3 back to 1 ok, now we can see the results of the gamma fade, so you can see that we're getting the window highlights and we're also getting the face coming back through as well so we can getting a much better balance and you can see here on the waveform monitor we're getting a much better balance of the two that's the bright and that's the dark okay, so I turn them back on again bright and we turn on the gamma mix between the two that's the two of them so we don't have crushing at the bottom and we don't have clipping at the top and of course from there you could also add an adjustment layer as well to do some color correction. Now the adjustment layer sadly is um, very straight, very simple three wheel color adjustment so you uh, don't get a great range of choice here. You can give it a bit more blue inside, maybe warm up the exteriors, maybe give a lift in the mid-tones I haven't got too much blue in there now, I think. You can see all the mids raising up. Might crush down the darks a bit. Which we are trying to avoid before, of course. We might neutralise that saturation, not so happy with that. Hold down the shift key and you can scrub this value back much more slowly. Do the same here mids 
Now I'm not so inclined to move the whites because of course it will blow out all that detail that we retained before. But anyway, there you go. That's a quick demonstration of the VSE using uh, a HDR facility from uh, Magic Lantern which I think everybody should go out and install uh, as soon as they possibly can on their uh, Canon DSLRs. And thanks, thanks again for watching.